Hey guys, I'm back in beautiful Arizona, Sedona. It's just an awesome day and I'm looking at a, a really sweet bike. This is the Cannondale Motera. It's a full suspension electric bike running Bosch with a really unique battery placement. You can see it's mounted below the down tube and sort of inset. Um, I haven't really seen this before. You know, most of the time the Bosch battery is on top of the down tube and it's fairly exposed and it's one of the telltale signs that it's an electric bike. Uh, but more and more, especially with the CX motor, they're tipping it forward a little bit. They're, you know, melding it with the frame and there's just not a whole lot of extra casing, plastic going on here. I love that you've got a bit of a chain guide, chain keeper here that's gonna keep that from bouncing off when you're going through rough terrain. It's also gonna keep your pants, if you were wearing pants, or you know, maybe you're just cruising around the block or something, kind of slough over that versus you know, dangling on top of the chain and maybe getting scratched up, um, you know, de-threaded. This is a 14 tooth sprocket up front, very small, so great for climbing. And in the rear, we've got Shimano SLX. Step down from XT, but this is the Shadow Plus, so it does have the one-way clutch. You can tighten up that chain if you're getting a lot of bounce. Love that they've got this really integrated rubberized slap guard, and you can see there are a bunch of nicks here. We've been riding around all day. 11 sprockets in the rear, that's 11 to 42 teeth, so a great range to ride with. Just really well set up, good components, um, and that carries over to the brakes as well. So hydraulic SLS disc brakes, we've got the finger adjust on those levers, two finger, 180 millimeter rotors, the SLX calipers with ice tech, and you can see the little, that's sort of like a heat sink there, it reminds me of computer parts and stuff. I really like that, so it's gonna dissipate the heat a little bit better. And, and that's cool, you know, this bike is really well balanced. There's a great component set that you're working with and it's spread across the frame, the weight at least, in a way that, that handles really well. Um, the colors look good, it comes in four sizes. I believe it's 15, 17, 19, and 21. The Cannondale website, it has some good information but I was relying on the UK specs a little bit. The US, it just it wasn't there and they just have small, medium, large, and extra large. But regardless, I've measured this one. This is a 19 inch and they it's the large frame. So I've measured the seat length, seat tube length, the reach, the standover. So everything you've gotten from me, I've measured. And you know, I'm, I'm enjoying the bike. And I feel like, you know, with the suspension here, we've got air suspension from RockShox, Yari, 130 millimeters of travel front and rear. We've got the compression clicker up here, rebound. And then at the back, I was a little bit surprised because it looks like it only has rebound. I don't see compression or lockout, but they're both air, so you can sag them appropriately. Again, higher end components. This bike is $54.99, so you're spending a little bit more, but you're getting more, certainly. And it's going to boost, so 110 millimeter through axle up front, 15 millimeters width, 148, 12 in the rear both with quick release. You can take those off, you can easily take the battery off, despite how integrated it is. I still think this is one of the more, I just easy to work with batteries. I think you can even charge it on the frame. See how there's a cutout right here? You can reach in and that rubber flap comes up, but it's not as easy as on some of the other ones. You see, I have to stick my finger in there and kind of you know, tease it out a little bit. There we go, got it. And then you can plug in the charger just as you would, or you can take the battery off completely I tend to do that when I'm mounting this on my car. I just don't want the extra weight, um, you know, bouncing on my rack or whatever. This uses the Power Pack 500, which is great. The older Bosch battery was the 400. You're getting 25% more capacity. You're gonna go a little bit further and it's only like 0.3 pounds heavier. So that's a good deal. That might be part of why this bike costs just a little bit more than some of the other full suspension. The weight on it, not too bad. 52.4 pounds. I've seen some of the other bikes in the 54 pound range. So, you know, again, air suspension, and this is the larger frame. The tires, Schwabi, Nobby Nix, Evolution, they're tubeless ready. Should be a little bit more durable. Meter width on the, uh, the rims here. So it's, you know, it's a pretty solid bike. And I'm not sure if this one comes in different colors. On the UK site, they call this the Matera two and then there's the Motera three and there's different colors and you know we're here in the u.s and i'm actually with my friend josh from bosch how's it going hello how are you i'm doing really Good. well you know it's it's fun to get a different perspective on these bikes and mm -hmm. you know you work for bosch and bosch supplies a number of different bicycle manufacturers but the cannondale model is one of the first that i've seen with that really clean battery integration and the first thing i thought was like how cool and the second thing i thought was 
oh no, you yeah. know, like what's, what's going to happen if you're, you're like running over something like the battery is just, it's, it's one of the more expensive components on the bike. I think a power pack 500, what is it like $900 to replace yeah, about, re about retail? Yep. So you don't want you know, I'm not trying to be alarmist, but most of the time it's up here and it's protected by the metal. I've seen a couple other bikes like LaPierre, I think, um, what was that? I was looking at one just yesterday that also had the inset battery. Do you know what I'm talking yep, about? Yeah, the LaPierre has a battery that's mounted right in here. Yeah. Um, there's the mustache has it in the. That's the it, the mustache. Too. Yeah. yeah. Kind of more integrated with the cover over it, so a yeah. little bit more hidden. But and you know, and then you have metal on the bottom. Yeah. But the weight is also a little bit raised, and those ones seem fatter. And when I'm pedaling on a bike, you know, I'm I guess just my my legs. I don't. I've I've ridden on some of these cheaper e-bikes that are really fat maybe like the saunders they got a big plastic box and i don't want to hit my knees or my my feet on this this is a performance bike and i love how narrow they've been able to keep that but then again vulnerability so we have this rubberized tab thing here if you pull from the bottom like this it comes off and this is just like a nick protector or whatever like you'd see a yeah. lot of bikes have a sticker it's that but it's also impact they designed it for a really dense uh, rubber on there they call it the bat strap bat strap and cool it covers the battery and it helps with um rock strikes and you know also it would hold the battery in too not that it's going to come unlocked but in case it does get knocked or something like that but yeah. the idea was to protect the battery from rock strikes okay so i mean they're aware like these yeah. this is a cannondale's been around for a yeah. while they make good stuff yeah. I feel like they've thought it through. Um, yeah, and then they also have um, two riders, uh, Mark Weir and Marco Osborne, riding these and talked to them at Sea Otter after some extensive riding. Oh, yeah, it was just recently, and, right? Yep, yeah, were yeah. they in the race? Was that they weren't in the race. They were out riding, um, but they do quite a bit of riding on the Moteros that they have. Okay. And they've put them through hell. And they've had no issues with batteries, um, rock strikes, logs, anything like that. Everything that, you know, everyone's kind of concerned right there about impacts. Um, but the idea was getting the battery in the drive unit low. Yeah. And then the rotation of the, um, the drive unit here allows for a short chain stay. Oh, so yeah. what they're trying to do is, you know, the new trend in mountain biking, long reach, long top tube short stays and makes for a really great ride hmm. and so that's kind of the the issue with e-mountain bikes is how to accomplish that with the drive unit with and the, the battery yeah so getting everything really low rotating it makes for a really good riding bike and you can see that in uh, some of the other brands too like lapierre with their design um but yeah this is very unique with it upside down hmm. but yeah they've done quite a bit and they haven't had any issues um they've had it for about two years in the u.s and yeah we haven't we haven't been getting calls about batteries getting impacted. Good to know. Good, good to know. <laughs> yeah. Well, of course. And, you know, you do have a, a it looks like an aluminum alloy skid plate yeah. on the bottom. And the battery is, it's higher than that. And it's forward. So that angle gets steeper and steeper. You really have to be like on a parking cone or something to, to bash that yeah, battery. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Or like a really tall log that you're, but at that point, you're going to be picking the bike up and over. You're not going to use it as like a pivot point to get over anything. Huh. Well, and I love that they've been able to incorporate a bottle cage set up right there whether it's yep. for a pump or a lock yep. or just water so many yeah. bosch bikes in particular the, since the battery's there yep. you just don't have room on a full yeah, suspension or, yeah or any other any other e-bike with the battery like that it's the same thing um yeah getting the, the cage in there water bottle it, it's key for mountain biking yeah not too many people think about it but when you actually get out there you get thirsty nice, yeah, yeah it, it's just nice okay so compliments on that yep. compliments on the range of frame yeah. sizes, I think they've put together pretty good value in terms yeah. of components. You got the tapered head tube, a little bit lighter, a little bit stiffer. The SLX component group throughout, I appreciate. Um, you know, do you have anything to say about those, uh, the Ice Tech uh, rotors and the, like the little heat sink thing? I mean, I think yeah. it looks cool, but. It's good, I think it, it works really well because the other thing with um, e-mountain bikes is you are adding weight. Like you said, 52.4 pounds. Uh -huh. That's a heavier heavier bike. And when it comes to stopping, you want the braking power. So you gotta make sure that the pads are cool, the rotors are cool. Um, so the ice sink does a really good job of keeping those nice and cool. Okay, okay. And back to the battery for yep. just a second here. I've been told that with Bosch, you can actually kind of tighten the mount. So over time, if you're, apparently it hasn't been as much of a problem with these plus size tires and full suspension bikes, yeah. but some of the road ones, if it vibrates a lot, you can take it into your shop and they can tighten down the clamp a little. Is that right? Yeah, correct. We work with all our dealers, getting them trained with the, the tools, the lock ring tool, the battery jig, which is a blue piece of, blue piece of plastic that sets the distance for the mount mm -hmm. and what that does is the bottom portion here the locking mechanism is slotted 
on the frame so that'll slide up and down that sets the distance to keep the battery tight okay. so it's if, it, if it's wiggling or jiggling take it into your bosch dealer certified dealer and they can fix that for you okay you helped out and and magura is like a, a yep. maintenance partner yep. right magura, yeah Southern yep, magura. magura is our service partner in the u.s and then for Canada, we work with Live to Play. Okay. So they, they help us take care of the bikes and, and work with all the brands. So that way, if you buy a Cannondale, a Mustache, LaPierre, Trek, you're dealing with one service partner to help take care of everything. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Okay. And would you mind trying to put that rubber yeah. piece back? Uh, just it's kind of neat to yeah, see. Yeah, you kind of just pull it here and we'll get that out of the way. And then it just slides right slots in. Slots right in. Yeah, yep. it's actually a really cool design. Yep. And then I believe they are replaceable. So if something were to happen, gets cut or something like that, you could replace those out. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they do a really good job. Replaceable here, protection for the battery. Um, the chain keeper here, it's replaceable as it wears out. That would be a natural wear item. Yeah. So yeah, they uh, an innovative design incorporating in the Bosch system into a well-riding machine. Yeah, okay, and one thing when I was looking on the website, I was trying to figure out pedals. It's a minor detail and a lot of higher-end bikes don't even have pedals. I'm not sure what the case is here, but these have been working pretty yeah. well on the rides. I love that they've you know got a fabric saddle. It's a bit of an upgrade and matched. That's nice. You know, you've got the gray with some black, maybe silver black and orange accents. It's a it's a handsome bike. Seat post dropper. Um yeah. Just a mechanical one with the uh dropper over here, a little bit wider up front, shorter stem. So, you know, the other day when I was looking at the mustache it, it had a longer stem and it had a longer travel front for me i, I guess i kind of like that this is 130 all across have yeah. you had a chance to ride this one i have it rides really well um kind of the, i would say wouldn't say it's necessarily an american standard but american geometry is a longer top tube yeah so your reach is a um a little bit longer but then you throw on a short stem to yeah. keep it in there and so and then with the tighter rear end um it makes for a really good cornering bike and it rides good i do like the geometry on there cool yeah. well and that's what i've heard about that shorter just trying to keep that those chain stays shorter keeping that wheel tucked in okay i'm gonna do a walk around here locking grips flat rubber um keys right here so you want to unlock the battery and they even put a little cutout so you can do the led indicator on the side but you can't really see it it's sort of over it's covered but that's handy when you take the battery off the bike you're charging it you're storing it inside just knowing how full it is without having to go to the bike and put it on and power up the display um, the bosch system is is really smart and fast it measures three signals your wheel speed right here with that magnet your pedal cadence and your pedal torque a thousand times per second so it's just it's lightning fast and the CX motor, that's their mountain biking, like high torque motor. It puts up up to 75 Newton meters of torque. And they've just released an update. So, you know, whether you had this bike from before or you've getting, you're getting a new one, there's the EMTB mode, which is, in my experience, more of like a torque sensing versus like levels of, of output. The motor's rated at 250 watts nominal, but it peaks at like 600 watts. So it's very capable. And with that smaller chain ring we were talking about, 14 teeth, that spins at uh, about two and a half revolutions for every crank arm revolution. So it's spinning faster than you're pedaling. And I was told that the smaller sprocket, it gives you more grab on the chain. But one of the challenges I've heard in really muddy environments, like in the UK, is that you can get a little bit of chain suck. But in this case, you've got that chain guide up there and I just, I don't, you know, you can see here on this rubber, there's a little bit of slap upward. But when you combine that one-way clutch on the Shadow Plus with that guide, I feel like it's maybe less of a problem on this bike. I actually really like how, how the drivetrain is, is set up. On some of them, they have pulley wheels and stuff, but they managed to get the geometry right here so they don't have to have that. Okay, so coming up to the display, they're using the Intuvia, which is the larger display panel. Is that stock on this one? Because I know some of these bikes yeah, I believe the Intuvia is stock on that one, and then on some of the higher-end models, you might see like a Purion or something. To yeah. Just the clutter on the front end. And the Purion's smaller, but in my experience, the Intuvia is a little easier to use. You know, the button pad here, there's a rubberized eye information button in the middle, so you can you can you know what it is without looking down. And then there's a clicking sound and a tactile feedback with plus or minus. Okay, so when you turn it on, it's the power button right there. It's going to boot up with your speed, your battery indicator. There's five ticks, 20% increments. Your four levels of assist or off right now it's just in bicycle mode and there's a little power scale that goes up and down there's also shift recommendation little arrows that say hey for optimal efficiency we recommend you shift up or down because remember that motor it's pulling the same chain that you are and so 
it can spin up to 120 RPM, which is higher than a lot of the other mid drives and, and good in my experience. I like to spin, um, especially if you're like climbing something really steep in a low gear, but it's gonna give you that feedback, that shift recommendation. And then down here, there's a bunch of trip stats. So right now we're in range. I'm gonna come back to that. I'll hit I, we'll go to odometer. I'm gonna hit I over here now. Trip distance, you can clear trip distance by holding reset for a couple of seconds. There we go. You get a clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and then back to range. Range is really cool because it's using the last two miles of ride performance, the capacity on your battery, and the assist level to dynamically estimate how far it thinks you can go. So if we hit up right now or plus to eco, that's the lowest level of assist. It's saying, hey, based on your performance and the full battery, 74 miles. It's incredible. It's really good range, especially given knobby tires and you know, maybe the suspension bob, we were talking about compression up here, but not back here. Um, you know, I, I feel like it's it's dependent. I'm only 135 pounds. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of variables to consider, but it's nice to get that on the fly and sort of customize even to your riding um, style. Tour, 37 miles, sport, 28 miles, and turbo. Turbo is just like, rah, rah, it's like right there. And it is a little bit more noticeable. The Bosch motor, it produces a little bit more noise maybe just because the, the chain ring's spinning faster when you're in high RPM, but when you're slower, it's, it's not noticeable over the trail, just the sound of those tires. So coming back down from turbo to sport, that's the EMTB mode that's so cool, and I'm really enjoying it. You don't have to worry about changing assist levels. Uh, you just kind of ride, and it's based on torque. So if you're just smooth riding and you're in cross country, flat, hard packed earth like we are here, it's gonna be putting out a little less energy and maybe more efficient. It's gonna be longer range. And then when you need it, as soon as you hit like a climb, you start climbing, then it's gonna give you all the way up to those 75 Newton meters. It's just a really a really cool setup. I feel like it works great um, and I appreciate that. There's also a light bulb button here. You can wire in some lights. Maybe you could work with a shop, but of course this bike doesn't come with them, mountain bike. And I think, I think that's kind of it. The display is removable, but I think they have them tacked down right now. There's a little set screw, so on demo days, that way people don't take the display. It can pivot front to rear to reduce glare. It's backlit all the time. Can't really turn that off, but it's fairly faint. You can go in here and change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour by holding reset and I for a couple seconds, and it goes into the menus, and there's a bunch of, uh, a bunch of different options in there. There's also a walk mode button on the top of the remote button pad over here. So if you press that, it says walk assist, and then you hold plus, the bike will power itself very slowly. And that could be useful. Like there are sections out here where just a heavier e-bike, you, you wanna get off, like, or at least I do. I'm not a pro rider and pushing it up the trail is also not super fun. So having walk assist where you're just over here on the right, holding that plus button, that's a pretty cool feature that not every bike has. And then finally, there's a micro USB port on the right side of the display. It's five volts, 500 milliamps. I've actually tested that. I got some, you know, adapters off of Amazon, micro USB to like my iPhone, I plugged it in and it charged it or at least maintained it. The lightning bolt came on. That's really cool if you're using Strava on your phone or maybe you're using a GPS or a music player or something like that. There's plenty of room up here to add something like that, an accessory. And I just feel like it, it works pretty well. You know, internally routed cables, clean looking frame. I feel like that's great coverage. I really appreciate your help, Josh, well, you know, giving me you. some feedback on the battery. Yeah. Okay, so this one actually feels pretty good for me. Normally I'd be on a medium, but the 19 inches, I'm gonna ride around on, you know, paved surfaces so you can hear the motor activating. Pretty quiet so far, but oh boy, that's why I wear a helmet. We're already up to 20. Really easy to do, especially when you're on, you know, pavement versus a trail. I'm in that sport mode right now, so it's very responsive. I'm gonna turn around. Here's slow. I'm gonna do some shifting. This does have shift detection, so it's designed not to mash as much. It eases off the motor power, just like you would as you're pedaling. we are again 20 miles per hour very smooth I feel like it cuts out smooth as well you don't end up just like hitting a wall 
Okay, you've got front row seats to the motor. Maybe you can watch the chain bouncing around and get an idea for that, that chain keeper, how that works. And then I'm gonna shift a little bit too, so you can listen for that. It can still bang, but the shift detection is designed to take a little bit of the edge off. I always ease off when I'm shifting for real. I'm gonna do it just real time here so you can hear, but um, yeah, it works pretty well and, and the alignment is good. I really like how the suspension's feeling. Like this bike with the plus size tires, it's just comfortable, it's kind of, it's soft. And maybe it's set up right for my weight, but um, it, it just doesn't feel as stiff as some of the other models. Well guys, I think that's it. I'm super excited to see the Bosch system getting more and more hidden because it is one of the e-bike e drive systems that just sort of stuck out before. There's just a battery on the down tube. That was really your only option. And now that we see options from like Broza and Yamaha that are inside the frame a little bit more, designs like this really appeal to me. So kudos to Cannondale. That's the Motera for the full write-up on this, including the specs and measurements. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Of course, have fun, ride safe.